From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia on Philly 57. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Cartelia. We are in a next weather alert tonight. It's been a rainy day all across our region. Here's a video from earlier today on Broad Street. You can see the raincoats and umbrellas helping to keep people dry while out on the, in the conditions, which are expected to stick around for the next few days. We're not the only ones missing the sunshine right now. Violent winds, hail, and heavy rain have left behind a trail of damage in eight states. Part of small town in Oklahoma are leveled, and some homes are ripped to shreds. A suspected tornado barreled through the town late last night. Monday's severe weather outbreak had a far reach from Illinois to Arkansas to Oklahoma, where one family found a tree poking through their kitchen cabinets. When we heard the tornado warning, we went to the basement and we heard a lot of noise and we could see through the windows in the basement that something big had come down. Thankfully, there are no reports of any serious injuries from those powerful storms. Well, here's a live look around our area, Bethlehem, Philadelphia, and Atlantic City. The rain is just getting started. There's more on the way tomorrow. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bill Kelly. Hey, Bill. Hey, Jess. And yeah, there's going to be a lot tomorrow, probably to the tune of at least one to two inches, maybe a handful of spots, even more than that. That's why there are uh, flood watches that are in effect, and it's just enough that we bumped it up to the next weather alert, where today we weren't, you know, it wasn't quite there. It was kind of a nasty day, but not quite to weather alert status. Out live tonight, you just saw some of the cameras. Things are still very wet walking around Philadelphia. Light rain, areas of drizzle, but humidity that is pretty much at 100%, so very little evaporation. 46, that's all we are temperature wise. So here's what it looks like. We had the batch of rain earlier, a little bit of a lull, but more showers that are back to the west and off to the southwest. In fact, if you're traveling this evening, you're heading down 95, you get to Baltimore, it is raining, and then you get farther south than that throughout DC, southern Maryland, and beyond. It is uh, pretty wet tonight with a few lightning strikes as well. And then there's a batch that's rolling through uh, right along the PA. Maryland line that is going to be heading this way and notice that we're starting to see some of these rain showers out near Lancaster County tonight. Another wave rolling through 9 10 o'clock around the Philadelphia area and that is what it is right there. In terms of our severe storm risk, our whole area is under the risk of thunderstorms. Most is the non-severe, the general thunderstorms as it's called. Off to the south, Cape May, far southern parts of Salem County, Dover and Kent County, in the one out of five, that's a marginal risk, meaning an isolated strong to severe storm possible. Tomorrow, that is a very similar setup. It noses up a little farther to the north, not quite to Philadelphia. I mean, our severe storm chance is pretty low, but it's there. We could be dealing with some hail, but what we'll de be dealing with, I think, pretty widespread is the areas of flooding. And like I said, the flood watch is in effect for basically the whole region tomorrow. Walking you through that updated future cast here coming up in just a few minutes. Jess, over to you. All right, thanks so much, Bill. Remember, you can check the forecast for your neighborhood at any time. Just go to our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. A busy stretch of I-95 remains shut down tonight after a truck smashed into an overhead bridge yesterday. Here's the impacted section. The northbound lanes of 95 are closed while repairs are being made, starting at the Betsy Ross Bridge. The ramp at Castor Avenue is also closed. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Ryan Hughes has new information from near the closure. For more than 24 hours, traffic has been crawling on I-95 in northeast Philly. The backup has been big and the frustration widespread. I just think it's ridiculous. There's always something happening on 95, getting shut down, you know, delays, traffic every day. Very stressful. Luckily, I have music in the car to keep me <laughs> sane. According to PennDOT, a tractor trailer hauling a large concrete cylinder struck a railroad bridge over 95 near the Betsy Ross Bridge Monday afternoon. The northbound lanes were closed as crews began emergency repairs to fix the bridge. Drivers are being detoured off 95 at the Betsy Ross Aramid. Mingo Avenue interchange. You can't really move, like, especially going to work and all of that kind of stuff. Like, like you got to literally leave an hour before you have to be to work on a 20 minute commute. The closure comes nearly 10 months after part of I 95 collapsed near Cotman Avenue when a tractor trailer caught fire. It was reopened nearly two weeks later. Drivers are hopeful once again their commute won't be impacted too much longer. I mean, it's affecting everybody. You know, getting to work, getting in, getting uh, to work in time, coming back to get our kids. It's you know, it's a whole process in the morning and during rush hour traffic. Well, I think this is minor compared to what happened before, so I think they could fix that pretty fast. 
PennDOT says it has been working closely with the U.S. Department of Transportation and local officials, and they are optimistic these repairs can be completed by the weekend. The crash remains under investigation. In Northeast Philly, Ryan Hughes, CBS News, Philadelphia. Well, today marks one week since the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. At a press conference, Maryland Governor Wes Moore announced an opening of a second temporary channel about 14 feet deep to get commercial ships past the wreckage. The first path, about 11 feet deep, opened on the north side of the bridge collapse on Monday, allowing a fuel barge and a scrape bar, scrap barge to move through. Rough weather has forced this team to pivot over the last 24 hours. But the mission and the work continues. This morning, crews were setting buoys in the rain to make sure vessels could navigate the waterways. Officials are expected to open a deeper third channel in the coming days that would relieve even more pressure on vessels that are currently trapped at the Port of Baltimore. An 11 year old boy and his father are in critical condition tonight after being burned in a house fire early this morning in Frankfurt. That fire broke out at about 1.30 overnight on Griscom Street near Church Street. Authorities say the boy suffered burns to 60% of his body and remains in critical condition at St. Christopher's Hospital. A seven month old and a woman were also so hospitalized, they are in stable condition. A neighbor was heartbroken to learn the news. This is just a catastrophe for an entire family to go through. And then I'm seeing, you know, it's going to be a long period of healing, the mental and the physical for the kids. God bless them. The fire marshal was on the scene this morning beginning the search for a cause. Well, we have an update on the Ocean County Mall jewelry store heist. Tom's River Police now say the thieves were well prepared when they broke into Venzio Jewelers last Wednesday. They covered the sprinkler heads with tape and used rags to block the bottom of the office door in order to keep smoke from being detected. The thieves used a torch to break into a large safe and steal a million dollars worth of jewelry. Police have identified the vehicles involved in the heist so far. No one has been arrested. The question remains, will the 76ers get their own downtown arena? Much of that decision hinges on an economic impact study that the city commissioned. But we've been waiting on those results for months with no clear release in sight. CBS Philadelphia's Dan Snyder has our coverage, including the latest word from the city. Can we get an update on where the studies are for economic impact and community impact? It's what everyone wants to know right now. When will the city release its study on the economic impact of the proposed 76ers arena at Market East? Initially anticipated in December, those reports are still not out. And even now, the city does not have a timeline. I will say we're getting closer and closer. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a final date. Even without the reports, project leaders are touting what they believe will be economic gains. 76 DevCore Chair David Edelman says they view the arena as a spark for growth in the entire Market East neighborhood. It needs to be a catalyst for people to go out to dinner before a game or after the game and spend money in the, in the city. He points to a $50 million community benefits agreement the Sixers have pledged as part of the project. They're also building some affordable housing units on top of the arena and promised 40% of the businesses associated with the arena would be black owned. But during a city planning commission meeting Tuesday, some members of the public questioned those claims. The games, those are peak times for Chinatown visits. So not taking into consideration the economic impact on Chinatown is a deficit. The street level retail in this pl new plan provides no additional benefit or jobs beyond what already exists. Without the economic studies in hand, a decision on the arena is unlikely. And until then, this debate will continue. Well, just an observation that it speaks to a Market East master plan that's incomplete in total. Dan Snyder, CBS News, Philadelphia.